Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hate intros. <laughs> my name is Jill for those of you that don't know and I do a lot of fashion and beauty and definitely try and make it a lot more relatable. So today I'm very excited to do this video. Sorry, I'm a little bit out of breath. I just ran up the stairs. I just noticed that my hair kind of matches the pampas grass. <laughs> So I'm going to be talking all about jewelry today and we're going to go into two things. First of all, I have a jewelry collaboration that comes out today. So I teamed up with a Vancouver based jewelry brand, True Curated, and it's female founded, Canadian. She makes such good quality jewelry and we put together a four piece collaboration called the Deco Collection. Obviously it's very inspired by Art Deco. I've just always been a huge fan of the period and how it influences jewelry and fashion and architecture and everything. And then I was also inspired by my own engagement ring actually that my husband co-designed. And one of my mom's vintage rings as well that I love to death. It inspired the signet ring because it's like a black square. Anyways, I'm so excited. And I do want to note that we had a pre-sale last week and the signet ring sold out in a day. So if you're interested in that, I would seriously jump on it now just so that it doesn't sell out before you can get your hands on it. I've just been wearing them nonstop ever since I got them. First of all, I want to start off by saying that all of these pieces are solid 10 karat gold. So the prices are a little bit higher than a gold vermeil or like a gold, what's it called? Coating? Not a coating. Or a gold plated. That's what I was looking for. So just bear that in mind. But that means that this is the kind of jewelry that you can keep on 24 seven. I am not the kind of person to take off all of my rings and my necklaces and my earrings every time I go to bed or shower or work out. It's just not realistic for me. So I need jewelry that is like tough and will stay in good shape. So that's part of why I love this collection so much. Tori just, she kind of understands that. And you know, even though a lot of jewelers are like, oh, you shouldn't wear your jewels in the shower or swimming or whatever. Like it's just not realistic for me. So all solid gold. The first piece is this beautiful pendant necklace. The stone is malachite and obviously there's gold around it. It's got these like cool little steps, very art deco inspired. The chain is also solid gold. It is really fine, which I love. I really like the length. And of course you can always change it for another necklace length. I feel like this is a more unexpected piece. I've kind of been dreaming about a green pendant necklace, but I haven't found one that I've just really loved. So we ended up designing one. Second piece is this stunning black signet ring. Again, you've got the steps reminiscent of Art Deco. The shape is very Art Deco. It's got like clean lines, but it's very geometric. The stone is black spinel. And again, this whole ring is solid gold. It's like fairly hefty. So you're getting quite a bit of gold in there. It comes in size three and four. So it is made for your pinky, but you can order a size. Like you can get a custom size as well if you wanted it on a different finger. And then we've got a solid gold hoop earring. I made these this size because I just feel like they're the perfect size for everyday wear. They're so good for layering. I'm actually wearing two of them right here. You can also get this little earring chain to add on as well to these earrings or your own, whatever you like. The stone is the same black spinel and it kind of looks similar to the shape of the necklace and the ring as well. But I really like to have kind of variety in length in my earrings. So I just thought it was such a cute little way to like make your hoops look different. So that is a quick overview. And now I just want to talk to you about layering and styling your jewelry. And the first thing I want to say is that there are no rules. I think that rules in fashion is bullshit. Just wear whatever makes you feel good, wear whatever you like. This is your, you know, body. This is your jewelry. So 
it's important that you really like it and feel good. I don't think that there's rules with like mixing metals. I think you can mix silver and gold and it looks beautiful. I just happen to wear a lot of gold personally, but I've always really liked mixing silver and gold. I don't think that you need to take off an accessory before you leave the house. I think that more is more. Obviously, I wear a lot of jewelry. <laughs> on a daily basis and this isn't actually that crazy. So I just wanted to kind of preface that. So I am gonna do kind of a brief overview on layering necklaces, but I'm actually gonna concentrate more on earrings and rings just cause I feel like that's not talked about as much. Obviously I have a really simple layering game here, just two necklaces. So just wanna point out that one of them is a pendant and I really like to mix pendants and chains together. And then if you're also gonna mix pendants, look at the shape of the pendant. So for example, mixing a square and a bar necklace or a square and a round necklace, I think is really pretty. I really like to differentiate the chains. That's something to keep in mind. So this one is really thin and delicate and this curb chain is a lot chunkier and obviously it's a different length. This is a really simple layering game. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> We're just gonna go with game. But in terms of doing more necklaces, you wanna pay attention to chain length. So in general, you want all of your necklaces to be different lengths. So you could do like one or two shorter, more choker length, and then you could do a pendant that's this length and then add a longer chain, maybe a chunkier chain, and then a last pendant necklace as well that's like a bar or a circle something that's a little bit different so definitely play with chain length play with the weight of your necklaces so again like i said you want to be aware of having like a super thin delicate necklace and then also pairing it with something a little bit more interesting with more texture that's like chunkier like i said at the beginning i think that more is more so go for it. You know how there were those arm parties from Man Repeller? They were wearing like this many bracelets and I kind of did arm parties, but I found it to be a little bit overwhelming. Even if you really like a trend, but you don't feel comfortable wearing it, just don't wear it. Just find something else that's more you. Maybe instead of wearing like 10 super thick bracelets, you wear like two or three more dainty bracelets, one that's a little bit chunkier, one that's really fine, maybe one that's a bangle. So just keep that in mind. And I kind of feel that way about all trends, whether it's jewelry or beauty or style. I just don't think that you should go for something just because it's trendy. I think it's really important that it works for you and your lifestyle and how you feel. Okay, so next let's talk about rings. I wear a lot of rings in general. As you can see, most of them are pretty different in terms of shape, except for my engagement ring and my pinky ring. Whoa, it's hard to, <laughs> it's hard to do that. This is actually a really good tip for people who are a little bit lost. If you ever want to layer a ring but kind of don't know where to start, choose any ring and then layer on a simple gold band. It just is like a really simple, pretty way to layer, especially if you have different textures. So like this Pave Diamond one and the simple gold band, I just think is so pretty and it's not too much. It's really elegant. And it's kind of like a good intro for people who are a little bit scared by layering rings. But let me give you a few, I was gonna say rules of thumb, but let's say guidelines. Again, if these don't work for you, don't use them. <laughs> if you don't agree with them, don't use them. But these are just kind of some things that I do myself. So if in doubt, start simple with the band. Another thing that you can do is start with a thicker band and layer it with a thin band. That looks really pretty and the balance is nice. You know, it's not too much. So you could do a bit more of a statement ring. I have these like really chunky rings that I sometimes wear and I'll usually layer on some kind of a stacking ring, whether it's plain gold or diamond pave or whatever. In general, by the way, I don't stack my pinky. I don't know why and I just realized that, but I just don't like it. <laughs> 
I don't know why. So another guideline that you can keep in mind is playing with different textures. So again, this is a good example because these textures are different, even though they're really similar and simple bands. Something else to keep in mind is shape, especially if you have like statement rings like this. This is a square and this is a much different shape. So even though they are larger and kind of more statement rings, they're different enough that it works. And then again, I've just slid on this really simple one in the middle because I wanted rings on most of my fingers, but didn't want to kind of overdo it, overpower it. Sometimes it can just be too much. And here's, here's another guideline that you can use that I've completely disregarded. If you're married, to keep your ring hand a little bit lighter. Obviously I didn't do this, but especially if you tend to go for gold and your wedding band and engagement ring are silver. Again, I think it looks amazing to mix those with gold, but if you wanted to do more of a statement ring stacking situation, it can be good to do it on your right hand and then maybe have your wedding ring and have maybe like one or two more simple rings just to kind of tie everything together, but not overpower it. Okay, last but not least, Let's talk about earrings. I actually really like an asymmetrical number of piercings in each ear. So I have actually one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I have five in each ear. I used to have six on this side, but you can see that I actually have four down here and five on this side and then one up here. And then I used to have one that was a lot further up here, but it just got a little bit infected, so I ended up taking it out. So obviously I like to wear a lot of hoops. My husband calls me Joe Exotic. <laughs> Something that you wanna keep in mind with hoops is to probably not wear the exact same hoop more than twice. So for example, I have these two solid gold hoops from my collection on each side, and I don't do it more than twice. And then next I've got the Pave hoop that's a little bit smaller and then we've also got this little stud and I kind of like to do larger to smaller going up your ear just because your lobe gets larger and then goes smaller and you just have less space there as well. So a few things to keep in mind in terms of earring layering is size, shape, and length. I don't know if I, I can explain this properly, but I actually did visual merchandising when I was a kid, not a kid, when I was in my early 20s. And I worked at Holt Renfrew and I actually learned so much there. And something that they always said in terms of styling a shelf is that you really want to make sure that you have a lot of variety in height. You don't want everything to be the same this way. <laughs> So you really want to do, you know, something higher and then mid and then small and then high and then small and then I hope that that makes sense. It totally makes sense in my head and I'm a very visual person so that's why I kind of tend to do that. So something to notice is that it kind of like starts shorter here and then it gets a bit longer and then it goes short, short and then very short. So that's kind of what I mean by playing with length in terms of earrings. You want to play with hoop texture like I mentioned before. So even though these are both hoops, one of them is solid gold, one of them is pave. And then again, I do like a bit of asymmetry. I don't think that they need to match in terms of piercing numbers or in terms of mirroring each other exactly with how your earrings are styled. So this is like a really simple way of differentiating them by adding on the little charm, but you can also do different hoops. You can do more studs on one side and less on another. There's lots of different ways. I feel like I'm throwing a lot of information at you, <laughs> so I hope that it's not too overwhelming, but this has been highly requested. So I just kind of wanted to talk you through kind of my thoughts on styling jewelry and the lack of rules and just throw out some guidelines for you. So just to finish off, my collection, the Deco collection will be available beginning today and it is a limited edition collection. There's not a ton of each piece. I think that they're really good Christmas gifts. I know that a couple of my own girlfriends have sent them to their partners to be like, hey, I want this. 
And I also really like that even if you're wearing sweatpants every day, it can kind of be like your own way of dressing up and making yourself feel good because I'm actually not somebody who wears jeans at home ever. Or like, I only wear sweatpants and pajamas at home. If I am at home, which I am most of the time, I am not wearing nice clothing, but I am always wearing my jewelry. All of these pieces are solid gold. That's why the price point is a little bit higher. I know that some of these are more investment pieces, but I just wanted you to keep that in mind. They're not gold plated. You can wear them all the time. Like I said in the beginning, I wear them to shower, to sleep in. I basically never take off my jewels. My jewels. <laughs> What am I, like Marie Antoinette? Thank you so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the description box and I'll see you soon. Bye.